Hello. Welcome to Film Focus Recaps. The movie opens in a dystopian 2045, showing a world dominated by advanced technologies and innovations. To escape their desolation, people engage in ontologically anthropocentric sensory immersive simulation, Jesus, or Oasis, that's better, a multiplayer virtual reality entertainment universe. In this virtual world, people can access everything they want via their avatars. It's a world where imagination is the only limit. The Oasis serves as both a multiplayer online role-playing game and a virtual society. I'll stick with Club Penguin. This entire system is created by two geniuses, James Holiday and Ogden Morrow, whom people regard as gods. After James's demise, his pre-recorded message is revealed to the public. In the message, James's avatar, Anorak, announces a contest whose winner will be granted ownership of the Oasis. In order to win, the participants must find the golden Easter egg that is locked behind a gate. This gate can be opened with three keys, which will be obtained only after completing three challenges. Since the company is worth billions of dollars, the contest has lured several gunters, or egg hunters, including Nolan Sorrento, the CEO of Innovative Online Industries, or IOI. Despite having his own video game conglomerate, Nolan still wants the Oasis, probably to enjoy Monopoly. As a result, he has dispatched an army of indentured servants called Sixers in order to search for the egg. Let's never call them gunters again. The hunt appears to have been going on for five years, yet no one has been able to obtain even the first key. We are then introduced to our protagonist, a 20-year-old, Wade Watt, who lives with his aunt and her boyfriend. They reside in a low-income community filled with precariously stacked trailers and vehicles. Wade also has signed up into the virtual world with his avatar named Partzival. There, he has some friends, a muscular mechanic, Ake, a samurai, Daito, and a fighter, Sho, who haven't met each other in person. As usual, they attempt to win the first Oasis Challenge, an unbeatable automobile race. While most competitors use their well-equipped race cars, Wade rides a traditional DeLorean. As he waits for the race to start, Wade sees a female racer on a bike, Artemis, who instantly captivates him. Yeah, that's one nice avatar booty. She must have cranked the thick slider in character creation. Soon after, the race begins and hundreds of avatars compete for the key. Being a mechanic, Ake upgrades his monster truck and crushes the other vehicles, making his way forward. Suddenly, an enormous gorilla appears and destroys the racetrack, eliminating most of the players, including Ake. The creature then uses the broken road as a trap to destroy the other vehicles. Upon learning this, Wade applies an emergency break, but he notices Artemis planning to jump over the broken road, unaware of this trap. In a swift move, Partzival grabs Artemis, narrowly saving her from the gorilla's grasp. In the aftermath, Partzival persuades Ake to repair Artemis's bike, so he brings them to his garage. The two then talk about the contest, and Artemis asserts that she's willing to risk everything to save Oasis from IOI. Later on, Partzival visits James's journals, a virtual repository of his personal history. There, he meets with an operator named Curator, who helps him in accessing the required data. Partzival watches a memory in which James and Ogden discuss the future of their creation. At one point, he hears James saying that he despises rules and wishes they could be reversed. This statement strikes him with a clue to finish the first challenge. Partzival then returns to the race for his next attempt and places himself in the last position. As soon as the race begins, everyone races forward, while Partzival drives backward. He soon enters a secret underground roadway that leads him beneath the racetrack. This allows him to easily pass through all the obstacles and finally arrives at the finish line at Central Park. There, he encounters Anorak, who awards him with a copper key, a lot of coins, as well as a clue. With this, his avatar name appears first on the scoreboard, earning him great popularity. I don't buy it. Every gamer knows to check behind them at the beginning of a level. Meanwhile, at IOI, the board members express their concern to Nolan regarding Partzival completing the first challenge. After a bit of comprehending their next move, Nolan enters the Oasis, where he hires a mercenary, Irock, to kill kill parts of all. Simultaneously, Wade uses his newly acquired wealth to buy everything he needs, a Zemeckis cube, grenade, and finally a full-body X1 suit, which he had been seeking for a long time. He then confides in his friends about the secret roadway to the finish line, after which Artemis, Ake, Daito, and Sho pass the first challenge as well. In the aftermath, all five winners spend their free time attempting to crack the clues about the next morning. To extract more info, parts of all and Artemis visit James's journals, where they watch a recording of a meeting between James and Ogden. Here, 
the duo discover that James had dated a woman named Kira, who later married Ogden. Partsival notes that this is the only time the creators have mentioned her name in the journals. However, the curator doesn't believe so and places a bet. He then searches the entire journals, but doesn't find any memory mentioning Kira. As a result, Partsival wins the bet, which earns him a coin. The two then learn that James had once taken Kira to the Distracted Globe Club, so they also head there to find clues. Upon reaching it, Artemis leads him into a zero-gravity dance floor, where they start dancing to disco. Since Wade is wearing his new full body suit, he can feel Artemis from the simulation. Needless to say, he's rocking a half chub. Their moment eventually takes a romantic turn, and Wade confesses his feelings for her, asking to meet in real life. Artemis dismisses the idea, saying he might be disappointed. However, Wade is so in love that he even reveals his real name to her. Unbeknownst to them, I rock is eavesdropping on their conversation. Moments later, an armed IOI force breaks into the club and ambushes them, intending to eliminate parts of all. But thankfully, our hero has the Zemeckis cube, which he uses to rewind time back 60 seconds, and the two flee the scene. Once they arrive at a safe location, Artemis reveals to Partsival that her father died in debt to IOI. She further claims that she can't afford to get distracted from her mission to find the egg before IOI and potentially prevent the other people from ending up like her father. On the other hand, IROC relays the information about Partsival's real identity to Nolan. As a result, Nolan contacts Wade the very next day and offers him several attractive incentives, including a $25 million bonus to help the company find the egg. Gunt with us, Partsival. However, Wade declines the offer, which infuriates the bad guy. Following this, Nolan admits that he knows Wade's real identity as well as where he resides. Upon learning of his plan to destroy the residence, Wade rushes to warn his aunt and her boyfriend about the imminent threat. Sadly, it's too late because the stack blows up and crashes to the ground, claiming his family's lives. Frightened, Wade hurriedly tries to contact his friends, but he's knocked down and abducted by an unknown, face-tattooed man. When he regains his consciousness, he's greeted by Artemis in real life, who introduces herself as Samantha. Turns out he's currently in a hideout, owned by Samantha and her fellow rebels. She then leads Wade to the rooftop and shows the IOI headquarters, also briefing him about their operation. Amidst their conversation, Samantha feels uncomfortable due to a large birthmark on her face, but Wade assures her that he's not disappointed at all. As they're about to kiss, Samantha has a sudden realization regarding a clue. According to her, the clue, the leap not taken, was James, referring to not taking the step to be with Kira. After this, the group of five friends meets up in the oasis and heads to James's journals. Once there, they ask the curator about the movies that James may have taken Kira to on their date. After going through through all of those movies, they stumble upon a film called The Shining. Curator then directs the group to the recreation of The Shining, and they end up at the Overlook Hotel. Believing that the second key is hidden here, they venture inside to get it. Ake, who hasn't watched The Shining, doesn't have any idea what's awaiting them. Let's hope they don't see that guy in the dog suit. If you know, you know. Shortly after, he gets distracted by twin children, who lures him away from his group. He then enters another part of the hotel where someone tries to kill him, but fortunately, his friends rescue him, and they make their way to a ballroom. There, they find Kira dancing with a group of zombies over a large pit. Recalling the clue, Artemis takes a leap while the rest of the group is dragged out of the hotel. Artemis eventually manages to make it past the zombies and invites Kira to dance, a step James couldn't take. Following this, Anorak appears and offers her a jade key to the next clue. The rest of the group members follow her and obtain their own jade key. This news appears on the scoreboard, which makes Nolan realize that Wade is still alive. Enraged, he hires one of his associates, F. Nail, who is a professional assassin, to execute Wade. Immediately acting on her mission, F. Nail firstly tracks down the face-tattooed man who took Wade away earlier. She, accompanied by the IOI force, then follows him to Samantha's hideout and ambushes the teenagers. In a desperate bid to evade capture, Samantha directs Wade to a secret passage that leads outside. Wade tells her to accompany him, but the latter decides to stay back and earn him some time. As a result, Samantha is apprehended and taken to the IOI facility to pay off her father's dead. Meanwhile, Wade runs into a woman named Helen, who reveals herself to be his best friend Ake from the Oasis. She then takes him to her van, where he meets Toshiro and 11-year-old Shoto, who are Daito and Sho, respectively. Together, they head towards the IOI facility to rescue Samantha. The scene then cuts to the IOI facility, where Samantha is held in one of the chambers, forced to work for the company. The company turns out to have hacked the third challenge, located in Castle Anorak on Planet Doom. To win it, the players must guess James's favorite Atari 2600 game. In order to prevent anyone from entering the castle, Nolan has IROC activate an impenetrable force field around the vicinity. Furthermore, he orders his laborers, including Samantha, to plant explosives outside the front door. But before he can proceed any further, Wade and
and his team secretly hack into Nolan's online feed before confronting him in his office. At gunpoint, Nolan reveals Samantha's exact location and chamber number, enabling them to help her break free. Samantha, who now knows about the IOI's plan, decides to remain in the facility and disguises herself as an employee in order to deactivate the force field. In the next scene, Wade broadcasts a live message across the Oasis, informing all the players of Nolan's cruel motives. He eventually manages to convince them to come to Planet Doom and assist his team to stop Nolan. Not long after, thousands of players show up in their support because they obviously don't have anything better to do, ready to fight against the IOI forces. Meanwhile, inside the castle, Artemis somehow manages to destroy the force field. Following this, Wade and his team lead an army of Oasis players, ensuing a huge battle. Seeing his force gradually getting weak, Nolan puts on his Mecha Godzilla armored suit and starts taking down the players. In retaliation, Ake turns himself into an iron giant, while Daito transforms into a Gundam to battle the massive Godzilla. At this point, the movie is just flex and IP, and Spielberg has lost all credibility. With the help of two of them, Artemis throws a grenade into the Godzilla system, blowing him up. Upon seeing Artemis in the Oasis, Nolan realizes that Samantha is still inside the IOI facility and begins searching for her. This makes Partsival fear for her safety, so he deliberately kills Artemis, allowing her to flee the facility and reunite with the rest of the group in Helen's van. In the aftermath, Partsival and Sho make their way inside the castle where they find a Sixer, trying to pass the final challenge. They watch him play a video game called Adventure, which he wins, but still fails to get the prize. Upon witnessing this, Partsival realizes the way to pass the test. However, before he can proceed, he's intervened by Nolan, who tries to bribe him one last time. When the latter is still resistant, Nolan pulls the trigger of the catalyst bomb, wiping out every avatar, including himself. Back in the real world, Nolan is happy that the competitors are all eliminated. However, his joy is short-lived when he learns that Partsival has managed to survive using an extra life coin that he won in a bet with the curator. After this, Partsival starts playing adventure while the Oasis broadcasts his performance. According to Wade, the goal of the final challenge is keep playing until one finds the hidden Easter egg. He's gunting hard today. He eventually manages to locate the egg, and this completes the final challenge. As a result, Anorak shows up and presents him with the final key. Meanwhile, in the real world, Nolan, Fnail, and the IOI force locate Helen's truck. They attempt to intercept them, while Helen tries her best to flee. In the Oasis, Partsival unlocks the gate with all three keys and enters a treasure room filled with valuables. Anorak then offers him to sign a contract that'll grant him ownership of the company. While on the verge of doing so, he suddenly recalls how James forced Ogden to sign over his company shares, an action which he later regretted. Not wanting to repeat history, Partsival refuses to sign the paper. To everyone's surprise, this turns out to be another test, which Wade passes. The entire setting then transforms into James's childhood room, with Anorak also turning into his real avatar. Inside the room, James shows a red button that can destroy the Oasis forever. Furthermore, he hands Partsival the Easter egg, while emphasizing the importance of reality over virtuality in life. Before departing, James encourages him not to avoid reality the way that he did. Just then, Nolan apprehends the group, but when he sees Wade holding the golden egg, he's startled and surrenders. Following this, he, along with F. Nail, is arrested by the authorities for their illegal actions. Ogden then shows up and congratulates Wade for his victory. However, Wade excuses himself and takes a moment to kiss Samantha, confessing his love for her. Later on, Ogden hands him the real ownership paper and asks him to sign it. Wade agrees, on a condition that the prize be split with his friends, intending to run Oasis together. Following this, the five friends walk out of the van as the people cheer for them. Afterwards, Wade has a brief chat with Ogden, who reveals himself to be the curator and decides to stay on as a consultant. The movie ends with the new owners, who now decide to close the Oasis twice a week so that people can spend more time with their loved ones in the real world. Shortly thereafter, everyone stops playing entirely because without the mysterious keys, this game is boring. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.